Hey guys, Brian Collada here with Train by Tex. Uh, today I wanted to cover a uh, function of the picoscope which I find useful uh, when you have a potential intermittent problem that you need to duplicate. And maybe that problem doesn't happen for uh, say a half hour. Maybe you're, you're trying to get that vehicle to act up and it requires the engine to be hot and it, ha and it needs a very long soak of say a half hour to an hour of the thing idling in, in your bay and you want to have your lab scope connected so you can capture the failure and, and analyze the data but you don't want to necessarily be staring at the screen for that entire hour while you're just waiting for the the problem to occur so I'm going to show you a way to set up a mask and then I'm going to show you a way to set up an alarm where the software can alert you when a problem were to exist. So uh, I hope you uh, enjoy this video and thanks for watching. Alright guys, so we have the uh, PicoScope set up here. Um, right now I'm just using it in, uh, in demo mode. Um, <clears throat> the uh, what I'm looking here on channel B is just injector current. Um, you can see that the pattern is, is bouncing all over the place. Um, that's not what I wanted to do. I want it to be held stationary. And, and how you're going to do that is by turning a trigger on. So you're going to at the bottom of the screen here, you're going to click on trigger and uh, click on repeat because you want it to be a repeating trigger. And then click on the, the channel that you want it to uh, trigger on, okay? And then put this little yellow dot wherever you want that pattern to be held stationary. What I'm going to do here is, is have two events happen on the, on the screen. That way I can you know, s show you how to set up this mask. Okay, uh, so now we're, we're live scoping. I'm going to go ahead and just stop the capture real quick and then show you how to set up a mask. In the top uh, toolbar here, if you click on tools and click on masks, you can now add a mask. We are going to put the mask on channel B. Let me delete that one. That's the one I did previously. Uh, I wanted I wanted to uh, I want the mask to be on channel B, okay, and then I want to click generate. And what that's going to do is it's going to have a preset here based upon your current scope settings. This I have found be pretty accurate as far as building the mask for you. The, the really, I haven't found a need necessarily to adjust this. I'm not proficient at doing it but I just use the settings that it populates for me and I just click generate. Okay, and then you're going to click click apply and that's going to add this wall of color surrounding your capture that you have. And you, you'll notice that by default it, it kinda in my opinion leaves the window kind of large around the capture. And Basically the way this works is whenever you're scoping and this capture would enter the wall of color, you know, the, the red mask that you see, it's going to flag an event. Um, I'm going to begin the capture again here. This number that's counting in the bottom right here is going to be all of the events that it sees that are happening successfully. Okay, and then in the left side here is going to be all of the failure failures that it sees. Okay, and a uh, failure is going to be any time that this uh, capture would be entering the red zone of the mask. Um, what I like to do is tighten up this mask a little bit. That way, if you have any errors, you don't have to travel too far to enter into the error zone of the mask. And the easiest way that I've found to do that is just by clicking in the middle of the screen or um, right clicking in the middle of the screen and then clicking on masks and then edit mask. Okay, what that's going to do is pull up these little dots and these little dots you can left click and drag 
and basically tighten up the, the, the error block of the mask so that any time that the capture would enter this red color it's going to flag an error. So this kind of takes a little while to do so bear with me here I'm just dragging these dots over just to kind of tighten it up a little bit. That one's a little bit too close. Okay. Get this box out of the way. So again drag this other other part of the mask over. Bring all these dots over. kind of hard to do this. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but it does work, and it does work pretty well. Um, one thing to keep in mind is if you have an unstable idle, you know, say this car is is loping, you know, it's not maintaining a steady idle, that's not going to allow you to make this mask so tight. You know, if you tighten this up, uh, if you tighten this up too much, you're not going to be able to to use to use it very well. You're going to have to keep that window pretty large. Okay, so I'm using the uh, this scope in in demo mode. So on the right on this little box right here is I don't if you don't know this uh, these are all the channels that you can change the demo to be. So channel A I can have a demo of a injector voltage. Currently, uh, I'm using injector current on channel B, and then right here is going to be RPM. So the RPM of this pattern is fixed, so that that's going to demonstrate this pretty well because it's not going to be bouncing all over the place. So if you have a vehicle that that has a loping idle, you know, make make sure you make these this window a little bit larger to allow that uh, frequency change to happen without giving you false errors. Okay, so now that we have this a little bit tighter, uh, I'm going to again recapture. So I'm I'm live right now. I'm these are all my successful captures, and then on the left here are all my failures. So currently there are no failures. What I'm going to do is again click on this demo button that's right here, and I'm going to force the RPM to increase. I'm going to go to 2,000. And then maybe 3,000, and then 4,000, just to create some errors that enter the mask. And then I'm gonna bring it down to 1,000 again, and then click stop. Okay, so now you can see because I changed the RPM of the the signal here that all of these little blue lines are going to be errors. And then at the bottom here, there were 125 successful counts and then 32 failures has happened because I had because I had increased that RPM. If you could imagine this being not a you know forced failure but a PCM that potentially is firing this injector you know excessively you know you you told it you told the software that the, this injector should fire here and should fire here, and instead it has fired here, 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 and here. You have all these extra events that have happened. So this is a good way of, of mapping out the failures over time. You know, if you let this thing run for a very long time and you, you get one error every five minutes or so, uh, over time this, this graph is going to fill up with the errors and the, and the count will be down here at the bottom. Okay, so say you have a, a vehicle that uh, does not act up unless the thing has been idling for an hour and a half or something, something crazy, where you're not going to be wanting to stare at the screen for an hour and a half, you're going to want it to uh, basically run while you're not looking at it. This is a way where, where you can do that, where you can map out all the failures that have happened and you can have proof of it on the screen. And another way to take that a step further is to not only have this mask set up, but to have an alarm set up, which is, to me is is very helpful. 
And what I'm going to do here is show you how to set up an alarm. If you click on the Tools tab and then click on Alarm, the events of the alarm are going to be up here at the top. And these are the events that you can, you can choose. So I'm going to choose when the masks fail. So anytime that the capture enters my wall of color, you know, the mask, it's going to create this alarm. Okay? So click on masks fail and then by default the software is set up to do a beep, which is perfectly fine. If you want it to be short and simple, you can leave that checked as beep. You can click OK and, and you'll be done. And anytime that this capture enters the mask, it's going to create an audible beep. And you can pot potentially hear that across the shop and then come over and, and see what happened. I'm going to take that a, a step further and, and not use the beep, but I'm going to add a different action. And instead of it being a beep, I'm going to choose play sound. Okay, play sound is a way where you can upload a WAV file, a, a sound file, and you know if you want to choose something that's a little bit more louder or maybe even a little bit longer where you can hear that uh, noise across the shop. You know, Typically we're using laptops that may not have the best speakers and you may not be able to hear it in a loud environment. You know, say your buddy, you know, two bays down is using an air hammer or something and you may not be able to easily hear that sound. So what I did here is I went on a website and and just downloaded a a siren and what I have here it's called Air Raid and that's just a loud siren type sound. If you go into Google and just search in search dot wave files, you can uh, find a website really easily and choose a wave file that you like that's you know possibly loud or long or some way of of helping you. Uh, create a siren type sound that's much more easily heard. So I have that set up now where I have the file in there. I'm just going to click OK. OK, and now instead of it just making a beep, it's going to do this siren, which is like 20 seconds loud, along, and it's really loud. OK, I'm going to take that even further by adding in a second action. On the right here, you click on Add. And not only am I going to make that loud siren, but I'm actually going to save all of the buffers that are surrounding that failure. So anytime that this capture were to enter this mask, it's going to make this really loud siren sound, and then it's going to save the file for me. So say I even go on a say I go on a test drive or something, and this thing is run running in my bay while I'm driving a car when I get back if any failures were happened it, it's going to save the file for me which is which is great you know I don't I really don't need to babysit this thing at all I can be even out of the building and the, the event will be captured for me so what you're gonna do is again click on save all buffers and then the file you're gonna just click on that button here uh, and, and basically tell it where you want to save the uh, file at and I'm just going to choose this folder here which is labeled Honda. I'm just going to choose Honda as the file name. <clears throat> you can do whatever you want. Obviously this obviously this isn't a Honda that I'm in demo mode so this is just an example. But and click save. And then click okay. Okay, now again, I'm going to play this real loud siren. And then I'm going to save the file anytime a failure happens. Okay, and then just click OK. That's all you have to do. So now I'm going to start to capture. I'm going to go work on something else. I'm going to potentially go on a test drive, go on lunch, you know, go do whatever you got to do. And uh, this will alert you and save the file if an event happens. And what I'm going to do right now is just increase the RPM of the pattern to make the capture enter the mask 
so the event is, is captured. You can see there are so far 125 successful events that have happened that have not failed and then there are zero failures. So I'm going to click on this demo button here and just go ahead and click on the RPM button once. And there's my siren. Let that calm down a little bit here. <laughs> it's a very long siren, which is what I like to do just to you know make it obvious. And then after that siren's done, it's going to go ahead and save the file for you. It's still recording, so I haven't changed the RPM down yet. Let me do that now so it stops failing. <laughs> but the point of that, or the uh, benefit of that, is um, anytime that there is a failure that it sees, it's going to save again see this saving it again so now I have two files that have saved and then say you know you you wait five more minutes and then BAM there's the there's the failure again and now after this siren stop siren again <laughs> it's going to save a third file and that's without me even being near the computer at all. I can be on my test drive and this thing just saved three files for me automatically during a failure event. Okay, now that you uh, have you've gotten back from your test drive, you, you saw that there were failures and then you can see that the, the software has made these files for you automatically and it's going to label them you know, as 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 it keeps overwriting the file, it's not going to overwrite the file. It's going to actually create a second one. It's going to put a two and a three and a four and a five, and it's going to keep keep saving additional files for you, so you can have all of your failures uh, saved for you when you get back on your test drive, or, or you know, back from whatever you were doing. All those all those failure events are going to be captured, so you can review them. All you have to do is click on them and open up the file and then review what happened which is you know very helpful I hope this helped you guys um, this is a, another way to deal with intermittent problems you know our, our job is hard enough to fix cars and it's hard enough to diagnose cars and it's extremely hard to diagnose vehicles that aren't necessarily broken in front of you you need that you need to duplicate the problem somehow and if it takes you idling this vehicle for an hour, um, this is one way where you can do that without having to stare at the screen for an hour. So you can still be efficient and, and, and accurate at the same time. So I hope this helped you guys. Uh, thanks for watching.